Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Nah, uh, on this occasion, we would be talking about national systems of innovation and entrepreneurship. Like we have uh, understood that innovation is not just a personal characteristics, but it's also something that a whole company needs to instill, need to incorporate, uh, for, and they need to make sure that all the business units and all the individuals in a company would be able to do that. But at a higher level, a nation, a country also has to make sure that uh, the atmosphere, the environment in that country enables innovation. And uh, we'll be talking more about why that happens. Now, uh, the first part, this is more talking about national systems of innovation. So we would be starting our uh, study by first knowing what is the connection between innovation and progress. Now, as you can see here, Sam Peter mentions that innovation is at the heart of continued economic progress. So if an economy wants to uh, progress, if an economy wants to grow, it wants to be bigger, the uh, the GDP, the GNP wants to increase, its exports needs to increase, then it has to continuously innovate. And by innovation, it doesn't mean that there has to be the same businesses that are there, but it could be a process of creative destruction for a business that uh, is already there. It, it, uh, nothing is uh, forever. Businesses would come and go businesses that are better adapted to the current condition would be uh, going up while the older businesses might be going down. That's what we call creative destruction. And at the heart of it are entrepreneurs. Those entrepreneurs, those people who uh, have creative ideas, those people who are able to uh, innovate, to find inventions and then innovate, those are the uh, people that are uh, the heart of innovation in a country and also the heart of economic progress. Now, innovation is not just about uh, trying to find an invention. It's also about uh, here, trying to find out new products, new methods of production, or new ways of transportation, finding new markets, or organizing the industry uh, to become a force in uh, innovation. So those are the several factors that would set in motion uh, the engine of economic growth. Now, uh, it seems if, if you are familiar with the concept of competitive advantage between nations, so each nation is uh, positioned to be better at one certain uh, product, one certain thing. So for instance, uh, let's say innovative products might be coming from Japan, might be coming from uh, America and, and now China also, but mass production might be uh, easier done in China and in India, for instance. Different types of products would come from different nations because certain nations have capabilities, unique capabilities and locations might also uh, for instance, there are places that are better for agriculture because uh, it's located like Indonesia in the ring of fire with lots, lots of volcanoes and so on. And this is an accumulation of capabilities over time. Now, Marshall has set up, has identified the characteristics that influence innovation in a country. So you can see, for instance, uh, how the institutional institutions in a, a country is set up, the banking system, for instance, the lending system, the venture capitalist system. Uh, uh, that's also evident in the next one, Ent entrepreneurs and financiers. If uh, an entrepreneur gets an idea, a great idea, will they be getting the backing of financiers? How will they get a loan from the bank, for instance? What about the society's perception? Are they open to new ideas, to new products, or are they uh, not that willing to open up? Now, also the openness of science and technology, also how uh, there is a network, a connection, a relationship between uh, science, academia, 
and industries or businesses. So that network has to be there. And then also uh, the production capabilities of a country, financial institutions, and also uh, about how uh, the country refers to individual ownership, for instance, because some countries are more in social ownership, some other countries are more in individual ownership and individual uh, ideas would prosper better there. And then also the position of the state. So those are the things that might be influencing innovation. Now, uh, actually, lots of companies are actually dependent on government, with, uh, even though they don't realize it, even though they don't uh, admit it. Because I, uh, let's see, for instance, Apple. Apple is very good. Uh, it's famous for making the first iPhones, iPads. But iPhones, iPads, or any handphone would not be there, would not be available if uh, the armed forces didn't pioneer the internet, for instance, or uh, the military didn't put on GPS satellites. And also if uh, Silicon Valley, the, the heart of IT innovation uh, was not uh, funded by the government in its early years. Or uh, let's say uh, th there are no universities and research centers that have developed those technologies. So uh, companies might eventually even try to evade, evade tax, avoid tax, while actually they have been benefiting from uh, the government. Now, uh, it would be also uh, for every government, it would be their role to be able to uh, produce companies, to, to invigorate, to motivate companies to innovate just like Apple, even though they might not be gaining direct uh, income from the taxes, but at least it affects the economic growth of a company. Now, here we can see where and, and when a government needs to uh, act. Okay, the, the first one, so uh, the, the role that the government can get is the role of trying to uh, subsidize and, and trying to uh, motivate idea generation. How do they make a system of governance where people would be free in trying to uh, share their ideas? And also government could be subsidizing. Government might be uh, using government spending. They might be spending more on new technologies, for instance. Uh, they might be helping out with distribution and also about property rights because if uh, a company that innovates, they need to be sure that no one else copies their product before they have reached their uh, uh, return on investment or get uh, profit from it. So no one else would copy. And now that's where intellectual property rights actually comes in. And that's the domain of the government. And also uncertainties. So companies do not like uncertainties. They need to know that if they make something, they would be getting money from it. But if uh, they're not sure, they might not be innovating. That's why uh, the, the government would uh, have to, uh, for instance, provide a stable economic environment uh, uh, to, to provide low inflation, to control inflation, to support research and development and, and other things like that. Also, uh, for instance, giving tax holidays for sectors that need to be boosted economically. Also, the government would be providing uh, complementary assets. A company wouldn't be able to produce if there were no electricity or no roads to distribute their goods or no water to process their uh, production line and no communication systems and, and so on. So these are the domain of the government to be able to facilitate these things. And also, uh, there are some things that need the cooperation of the government together with uh, the uh, industry. For instance, when the government uh, makes a regulation, uh, for instance, limiting the use of analog television and then moving on to digital television. 
So that would be uh, creating opportunities for uh, industries to make new kinds of TVs, digital TVs. Also giving licenses for 5G broadband, for instance, that would enable companies to make new handphones, handsets that uh, is 5G enabled. Also politics. Now politics uh, would be, uh, for instance, uh, needed to make regulation. Regulation on, on car safety, regulation on environmental safety, on uh, recycling and so on. So that's also uh, very important in this case. Now you can see here, these are the external conditions that are needed for a company to innovate. So you need uh, education. So you need to make sure, the company needs to make sure that they have expertise. And that's from education. That's uh, also the domain of government. Uh, they need regulation, so there's no monopoly. Uh, people can fairly, companies can fairly compete with each other and so on. And then now between the industries, there needs to be uh, a good relationship and good environment between the innovative firm, a company that's innovative, which uh, with its customers, which uh, with the suppliers and also uh, other factors as well as the institutions for uh, finance and so on. So this uh, environment is needed to enable an innovative firm. Now the triple helix also uh, supports that. So the triple helix is about the uh, collaboration between universities, which would be uh, kind of like the research center of the whole uh, nation of the whole country. Uh, they have students, researchers, professors, and so on. They would be creating the technology, training uh, the workers, uh, and, and so on. But uh, if they're in an ivory tower, they wouldn't uh, be getting anything done. The re results of the research should be also uh, used, utilized by the industry because the industries might be able to fund further research. The industries would be uh, producing the products and distributing it, distributing it to the market. And of course, the government would also set the regulations on those uh, innovative products. And this is the triple helix that drives innovation. Now you can also see here uh, how nations compete with each other in terms of innovation performance. Uh, this is an example of the EU countries, okay, uh, the European Union countries, but it seems that uh, the, the, the upper, this is low innovation companies. Okay, you can say uh, moderate innovators. Okay, and then this is the moderate innovators. The higher innovators would be uh, the bottom ones here. Okay, like companies like, uh, countries like Sweden, Denmark, Germany, Finland are very high in uh, innovation. Those are very innovative uh, countries compared to uh, co countries like Bulgaria, Latvia. These are more uh, under advanced countries. In terms of the world, uh, the most innovative uh, country would be South Korea, and then you, the United States and Japan. And uh, China uh, is also here in the list. And now uh, China would be upper high, high in the list because they would be uh, uh, getting more patents than other countries actually. So uh, countries are also competing in becoming the most innovative country. So uh, that's the first part. Uh, next would be the second part. We'll be talking about entrepreneurs. So the first part was about how a country, how the nation would be able to stimulate, to motivate, and to develop an environment that would allow uh, companies to be more innovative. Thank you. And wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.